Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. You're listening to the podcast presented by the Daily Pal. Pranuti, Amit, and Purva. And we're from the Daily Pow, a Bombay specific food and culture website. And this is our fortnightly podcast, The, the Powcast. In this episode, we discuss new food pop up brands in our food section, Bombay Binge. In the scene, our culture segment, we talk about three arts festivals happening in November and December in Bombay and other parts of the country. And in Metro Station, we read out some Bombay poetry. Stay tuned for Bombay Binge. <laughs> Bombay Binge. In this episode of Bombay Binge, we'll be talking about new food experiences that you're likely to see in upcoming uh, food festivals as well as flea markets in the city. So, Purva, you've actually been to some of them or you've you've experienced some of them? You know, so the ones I've actually, the one that I went to was the Celebrate Bandra Festival, which happened two weeks before this episode um, airs. And... Um, there were some uh, new brands there which also repeated at Kitch Mundi, which again was the week after that. But the good news is that you can catch uh, some of these at the Little Flea, which is uh, the city's biggest sort of flea market. Um, and they have a very sort of, uh, uh, you know, big food selection in addition to being a shopping festival primarily. And... Um, uh, what's why we're discussing this is because the the little flea is actually um, a launchpad for uh, you know home chefs and new food brands who sort of test who use the little flea as the pilot and uh, we've actually discussed this before where we were saying how. Uh, shopping brands also treat it in the same way and uh, Little Flea gives them the flexibility to experiment with um, different types of cuisines. Now Little Flea is going to take place on the 9th to the 11th and since that's the one that you can attend, that's the one we we will be talking about. Um, some of the brands that are that you can eat at are the Curry Brothers. Now we've written about this on the website. They're actually a home delivery, they're a food delivery joint in Low Perel. And um, they sort of, uh, you know, offer a bit of Goan and Bengali food. And uh, they do like rolls and pow sandwiches and stuff. And uh, they do like a Goan, like a Kaldin curry or Kosha Mang show, um, you know, uh, brawn moily and stuff like that. And, uh, um, so Curry Brothers actually was at the Celebrate Bandra Festival. That's the first pop-up they've actually done. And they're going to be at the Little Flea as well. Do check them out. Uh, they do. Their curry bowls are particularly nice. There's also going to be um, something called the Baloch Kitchen. Now, uh, this is a new sort of a food experience that you can actually sign up for. It's a home dining experience by this lady called Priya Jham is her name. And uh, her family, uh, so it's a, it's a Bhagnari community, which are sort of become synonymous with Sindhis here, but they treat themselves as an independent community. And there's only, it's a dwindling community. There's very few of them left. That's right. In fact, the first time I read about this community, I had no idea that we had a Bhagnari community in Bombay was in the Indian Express. Uh, right. They did a, a little profile of the community. And the Bhagnaris, they're Hindus, uh, they're originally from Balochistan and they eventually settled around Karachi. So a lot of them still have very strong links, at least nostalgic uh, feelings for Karachi. And um, a bunch of Bhagnaris, um, say about 150 families, according to this report, settled in a place called Kataria Colony in Shivaji Park. Um so there's a little Bhagnari community in the center of Bombay and I'm not even sure how many people know about it. So it's interesting that they're doing a food pop-up because Baloch yeah. cuisine is not something many people would have tried. And also Balochistan is so much in the news these days with, you know, Baloch leaders lobbying for, you know, Indian support for their independence and so on. So there's a lot of 
they've been in the Buzz news around. a lot yeah. yeah so what kind of dishes do they have I mean, is it similar to sindhi well, cuisine yeah so it? there's like uh, it's a bit of mughlai and sindhi food uh, i'll read out a menu that she recently served mm-hmm. um, in her home um, there's stuffed aloo tikki with poppy seeds mutton chops which is something you'd find in any sindhi mm-hmm. home um, with bhagnari masala uh, then there's your um, uh, khatti dal with steamed rice uh, so that's lotus lotus stem cooked in a clay pot there's a dry food pulao she does a murg makhan wala keema kaleji uh, arbi tuk and um, you know your typical uh, dahi vadas and all of that so there is a, a lot of overlap uh, in the sindhi mughlai your makhan wala for mm-hmm. example so that's and also the lotus stem right? the lotus stem it's again we sindhis cook it a lot and tuk as well isn't that yep. a sindhi tuk, specialty yeah, that is a yeah. specialty um So there's the Baloch kitchen then uh, there's also uh, just to, to show you what kind of range there is at the festival there's going to be death by barbecue which is something we've spoken about before again it's a takeaway joint mm-hmm. in Bandra and a uh, uh, delivery and takeaway joint where they'll be doing ribs wings you know your mm-hmm. american uh, t- typical american barbecue um another brand that we have covered is organic farmers company it's very interesting that they they choose to be at this festival because essentially they they do packaged they do packaged, they snacks, do packaged right? quinoa snacks uh but they're going to be serving the quinoa that they sell as um cooked food um at the festival uh look out for that um uh, there's another uh, bori food caterer called the big spread from baikala so you'll see a little bit more normally the bori food has become synonymous with um the bori kitchen the bori kitchen so look out for the the big spread there's a new brand that's uh, going to be launching um at kitchmandi and they're going to be at um the little free as well they call taco bao and uh, it's by the the is folks it, uh, like that mexi chino whatever that mexi yeah, loco so exactly mexi loco, uh, like loco chino loco uh, essentially loco chino. no but what they're doing is they're going to be offering tacos and baos it's the same uh, folks that run the little food company and uh, little food daily which is a uh, sort of a meal subscription service mm-hmm. and um the some of their fillings are going to be um for example in the tacos you can get a lamb barbacoa with pickled onions and chipotle sour cream you can get a fish taco with grilled pineapple and salsa the baos are going to be a three mushroom bao with um buttermilk fried chicken bao and a pulled pork bao so that should be an interesting one or you know just quick yeah. bite sized food are these sort of flea markets and shopping bazaars are really kind of testing grounds for a lot of these caterers aren't they because they graduate from being home cooks they start out as home cooks yeah. they sort of take a stall at one of these things yeah then they see how that goes and some of them then actually set up large scale catering outfits or their own places right yeah. i mean there are few places that have emerged from this scene uh, so one of them is pakapao yeah is so, uh, uh, pakapao actually essentially started as a pop up brand mm-hmm. only at a at a beer festival and uh, once they sort of got into little flea um, yeah. the response was so overwhelming and uh, they now have their own stall in bandra yeah. so for a lot of them in fact they uh like you said they even turn into just delivery services yeah. you know because and even guys like the bori kitchen who then sort of do collaborations with restaurants So right and you know in fact a lot of existing it also works the other way so there are brands like say vibe liquidaria which mm-hmm. we covered on the yeah. website it's a salad bar mm-hmm. it's like a smoothie and salad yeah. bar and they were really keen to get into the little flea is what i heard and now they'll be serving salads at the little flea okay. which is kind of strange know, when you already strange. have exactly. your own <laughs> setup to be you have your own to, setup yeah. plus you know i don't i don't really see it as a little flea kind of food but the the kind of crowds that they get mm-hmm. are so compelling for yeah uh, they really it's brands. i think the little flea has become like the weekender of uh, shopping bazaars and it's so crowded food, that it's yeah. just not comfortable anymore in fact uh, woodside inn is another mm-hmm. example yeah. of uh, they'll be serving their burgers yeah. at the flea but woodside has always actually been like there was a time that you went for any music festival you know the one place that you'd right. uh, you see there would be woodside inn and they've like even though they already had their own restaurant they were one of the 
first people to actually well, do this it, sort of yeah. catering. They have the burger shop is what they call, but I think this is the first time they're doing yeah. it free. So it also tells you the sort of scale. The of scale of how people want to get onto this thing because you know I think at that time when Woodside started doing this thing, they want many others like them. Yeah. Now there's so many people who just specialize in burgers and you know just yeah. uh, you know are, are set up stalls. In fact, there's somebody who's doing just veg sliders. Um, uh, they call the burger headquarter yeah. uh, at the Little Flea. Uh, it's a it's a great place for it's a great place for discoveries. Uh, there's Cafe Free India, which is a restaurant in Lopur. It is right opposite Deepak Cinema. Yeah, and which I have been to many times after watching a movie there. In fact, have I have do- never eaten there, and they're going to be doing crab dosas. Okay, so I haven't know. seen crab dosas on the menu. They're mo- they're more of a burger place. Okay, they have like a lot of burgers, and yeah. they're pretty good. But you know, another you know. another sort of a, sort of a surprising um, entry is Suman Agarwal, who is a nutritionist. Okay, and uh, she's going to be retailing healthy snacks at the flea. Hmm. So, like I said, great place for discovery if you just want to, you know. Get all the action of what's new in Bombay and what will actually come up after the Lilfi. There are there's a great possibility I, that these I will be brands. I hope after. that by the time Lilfi happens, they would have moved to a cashless system. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. You know, I don't know how they manage the bandra. Well, it was difficult, bandra. so they had Paytm oh, installed Kitch, everywhere. So that uh, was a bit of. Oh, at Kitch Mandi, how it's going to be? But yeah. uh, by the time this is in December, hopefully there'll be more cash in the system. But otherwise, yeah, just price everything at hundred or five hundred <laughs> rupee <laughs> or two thousand. Or two thousand rupees actually. Well, this wait, is, this is a large case, no family offer. Anything. Two thousand well, rupees. But you can't price it at five hundred. Can't price it. Sorry, right. two thousand so. family pack, family offer. Get like <laughs> twenty sliders <Anything. laughs> or oh, something like that. Cool. So we'll be back with the scene. Long, long ago, not in Bethlehem, but in a place nearby, there was a wonderful birth of a huge show, which I like to call Cyrus Says, a show that encapsulates everything in human history. From the first Homo sapien to the last Homo sapien, uh, who's traversed the entire world and then come back to India. This is a show which tells you everything about everything. If you want to know, avoid Google. Come to us. It's called Cyrus Says. Get new episodes every Monday on the IVM Podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts on. You get one banana water free with every podcast. Right, I'll just check that. I'll just check that. The scene. Today on the scene, we're going to talk about three arts festivals that are happening in November and December, which of course is the peak of the cultural season. Um, now, Pran, you have uh, done some research on all of these. There's a couple happening outside of Bombay, and one that's actually happening the day our podcast is out, which is Friday, November twenty fifth. Yep. that's right. So this is a three day festival, and it's called Poets Translating Poets. And it's the culmination of a project spearheaded by uh, the Goethe Institute, also known as Max Müller Bhavan. So they got uh, 51 poets from across South Asia, mm-hmm. as well as poets from Germany, uh, to come up with poems. And these were these poems were translated into various languages. Okay. So, for example, a German poem was translated into Mizo, and a Mizo poem mm-hmm. was translated into Hindi, and so on and so forth. So 51 poets uh, met over the course of uh, several months okay. and uh, you know came up with various poetic works. So now this festival is a 3-day affair. It starts on November 25th and ends on the 27th and um it's it's the first edition of this festival. Um and so did these guys they actually created poems especially for this. Yeah, so 51 of them participated in one week encounters across nine cities on the subcontinent so they met in in bombay they met in dhaka colombo delhi trivandrum karachi calcutta gangtok mm-hmm. hyderabad and you know they work together uh, but the festival itself you know it's open to everyone it's free so on the first day you have quite an exciting event it's called the tea party poetry in the streets so a bunch of poets are going to hop from tea stall to tea stall mm-hmm. um, in Lower Parel, Mahalakshmi, uh, near CST station, the Lal Street and Kolaba Causeway and uh, they're going to recite poetry. And uh, so They all sound like really noisy places. I don't know how <laughs> that's really going to work. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a noisy city. So I guess, you know, poetry lovers can follow these poets around. Uh, you know, they'll be in a bus or some sort of vehicle and it's like a hop-on, hop-off affair. So you okay. follow them 
listen to some poetry at a chai stall drink some chai and go to the next uh, go to the next venue uh the second day is dedicated to poetry of resistance and peace and it celebrates uh, the indian constitution so this will be a day of poetry readings film screenings and uh, and workshops um but the the people who are uh, participating who will be talking are names that you come across often in bombay's mm-hmm. cultural scene so there's ranjit hoskote of course who's a very well known poet and aside from uh, poet he has several other uh, he qualifications. calls himself a word artist that is his official uh, <laughs> well he's also sort of a cultural theorist descriptor because he's he does so many things he's also an art catalog writer curator he is an art writer he is uh, done many many things yeah so. then there's uh, kaiwan mehta mm-hmm. who teaches architecture but uh, is also a fixture in bombay's culture yeah, so he's okay. also written a couple of books uh, bombay history uh, books alice in bhuleshwar yeah. um then there's arunava sinha who is a, a bengali translator mm mm-hmm. and um has translated a lot of bengali poetry there's arundhati subramaniam um who's also a fairly well known uh, poet and it's going to wrap up uh, on sunday uh, and the theme for that day is poetry is romance with other arts but then so they already have the concert so it's what they're having a fling with music and then yeah. having a romance with the rest <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so there will be performance presentations i'm not sure exactly sure what that is uh, again with artists like atul dodia there's lyricist swanand kirkire um sunil shanbag theater mm-hmm. artist manoj shah also theater artist and so on so i i think there's something for everyone in this mm-hmm. festival it's not so, just yeah. a bunch of people reading and out poetry there's a website you can look at check out uh, their facebook page mm-hmm. uh, they have all the events on the facebook page and poets can, translating poets yeah and uh, there's also the website uh, which is uh, on the goethe institute which is on the goethe institute website oh okay yeah um which is g o e t h e in case <laughs> you know there's any confusion Confusion any confusion spreading. and yeah i mean so this festival is on the 25th to the 27th it and, is and uh, we are also of, media partners oh we should mention we media but that's not the only reason why we're talking about this and you could do worse than going for this <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, we're talking about it because we're such avid uh, poetry enthusiasts <laughs> um anyway so then there's magnetic words which is actually has a big connection with music because it's part of the magnetic fields festival uh, this is um, one of the f- I think two festivals that everybody tells me are worth going to a uh, zero festival of music in uh, Arunachal Pradesh and the Magnetic Fields Festival in Rajasthan of course Magnetic Fields is quite a pricey affair it's held in a palace and uh, I think like you stay in these uh, I mean if you if you a ticket luxury to this, tents. these sort of luxury tents I don't know you can What also get tent? your you also suite? get your own tent That's all I the think yeah. I need. but <clears throat> it is on suite and I think it might have air conditioning I'm I don't sure. know but I actually never been there. No, I probably just, in that weather sort of like, you don't need air conditioning. So, yeah, I mean it's basically got a lot of, uh, you know, cutting edge electronic music happening at Magnetic Fields, but this time they've actually introduced something called Magnetic Words which uh, is a literary festival. That's right and it's been put together by uh, this freelance writer. She's French British living in Delhi. Her name is Rebecca Hobson. And um in the Magnetic Words will have talks by the the big ticket author is william dalrymple and dalrymple has written a book uh, with another british writer called anita anand uh, called the kohinoor the history of the world's most famous diamond uh, this is yet to be published and you know as the neat title suggests it's about the controversial kohinoor uh, diamond then there's give it uh, back give it we'll back. pay even 500 and 1000 rupees <laughs> we can give the british <laughs> or we'll pay for it but give it back to us <laughs> no, it's never coming back and uh, yeah but you know this uh, dalrymple of course is known for putting together the jaipur literature festival which will happen in jan but uh, the other names in this list are quite interesting because they're not necessarily people you associate with literature festivals that's right like monica dogra for example she is a spoken word artist yes have you not seen her instagram feed i have i don't follow monica dogra on instagram <laughs> and they've all. got radhika baz who is a stand up comedian and we will hopefully uh, crack some jokes about the kohinoor diamond <laughs> and um, shailo oh shailo is well. yeah suleiman who is right. a visual artist so it's kind of interesting that they have all these people 
coming for what they calling magnetic birds but yeah, yeah. and there's also uh, ragu karnad who is mm-hmm. a journalist and uh, and an author and an author in, um, there's janis pariyat who is uh, another author and another both author. janis and ragu were part of time out delhi trivia for listeners which no one is in <laughs> mm, then there's someone called rohit gupta uh who goes by the monica compasswala and he writes on mathematics he has a blog and there's constant and simon who is a foreign foreign correspondent living in delhi so uh for the complete lineup you can but this is now where exactly in rajasthan so it's in alsisar mahal which okay. is the, so it's basically the, the regulars of the festival yeah. who so are basically this is a side right. festival like sh- side show bob right. <laughs> <laughs> for Not magnetic really fields. like side show bob uh, uh, okay. you know Uh, people but, who do it's such a contrast though right i mean electronic music where you actually don't sort of you just lose yourself and immerse yourself in it and something that sort of requires concentration right. listen right. to but this time they stop. have two side shows one is this uh-huh. and they also have this other musical side show uh, which is sort of a series of jazz gigs which has been yeah. put together by the piano man jazz the, club yeah. in delhi, delhi. Okay. Mm-hmm. so i suppose if people want to break from electronica So it's all going to happen at Alsisar. It's all going to happen at various places in Alsisar what they're calling the dungeons of uh, Alsisar. Oh, wow. okay. okay. Um some of Delhi's most recognizable jazz faces and names which I'm glad they said Delhi's because I can't actually I don't recognize any anyone. of the names. <laughs> <laughs> um Lisp the piano man jazz club is a great venue from what I've heard. I mean this guy is essentially put together a jazz club in the heart of I mean in Delhi and you know it's not exactly the most lucrative thing but they have gigs every week mm-hmm. and we keep listing them in our Delhi guide so you know kudos to him and yeah so the other stuff for people who are considering magnetic fields it's now suddenly might make the sticker shock a little less knowing that there's the so many things shock, you can do I mean the sticker's price it starts at 8500 per person and this I think this is in addition to what you pay for magnetic no no, no, so no it's all part of the same like that feels ticket price but then Fine. you also have to figure out your stay and right, things like right. that and I think that I don't know if the tickets are still available for uh, I think they are they are still available uh, but essentially that's what it starts at and that's that's the most uh, that's the most basic deal Finally we have the Serendipity Arts Festival um and this will take place in goa of course it takes place in december from the 16th uh, to the 23rd of december and i don't know how anyone's going to get a ticket to go to goa at that time because, because i imagine because there's no sunburn and uh, supersonic happening this year in goa right, so, so then there might maybe be maybe people will find it a little bit easier to get tickets to... but they're still going to be hello price exactly um but i you know i suppose it'll just add to all the excitement happening in goa the new year excitement happening in goa at the time so this is the first edition of the festival and it's been curated by 14 individuals who are distinguished in various arts and as well as food so there's anuradha kapoor who's the former head of national school of drama there's jyotindra jain who's a very distinguished art historian manu chandra um who's a chef uh, bangalore based poet and writer ranjit hoskore of course you cannot have a festival in this country without <laughs> ranjit hoskore <laughs> being there um artist riyas komu who is also the founder of the kochi biennale which will happen pretty much around the same, same time, time right yeah. around the same time yeah um and singer shubha mudgal so these are among uh, the curators and the festival will have um various dance theater music photography literature and food events so for the complete schedule check out the website so everything is on the website what are some of the highlights uh, of this there's something called lucid sleep that anuradha kapoor is doing with lulet dubey now i'm guessing that's like a theater event that's a theater event that that, that takes place throughout the festival okay so this is what it says it's a series of live works by seven artists over the course of 8 days um and it will be on choreographed i'm not sure what that mm-hmm. means and uh, will be performed in situ by each art each artist so there's a performance element and there's a music element and this is going to happen every day okay. um so this the festival will be spread across six venues in panjim um and all of it will take place on the banks of the mandovi river okay so it seems like <clears throat> quite a scenic picturesque kind of festival yeah 
So some of the music stuff that will be on at the, the festival is, uh, of course, Chubha Mudgal will be performing. She will be performing on the banks of the Mandovi River. There will also be a uh, collaborative performance between um, the Spanish flamenco musicians and Rajasthani Manganiyas. This is curated by Ranjit Barot, of course, who is a very famous jazz drummer. And there's also going to be the 10-piece Sunshine Orchestra, which is from A.R. Rahman's foundation. This is a bunch of people that have worked with him and people you might have seen work with him uh, I mean, sort of perform with him if you've ever checked him out on concert, like playback singer Jonita Gandhi and uh, Vijay Prakash. So there's a lot of music stuff apart from, of course, the, um, you know, the other art stuff. There's also going to be a fashion show. Rohit Bal is going to be uh, putting together something called Living Traditions. And uh, I'm guessing, you know, he will sort of stage the show while Shubha Madgal is singing. I think they did this somewhere else at another fashion week recently. There'll also be uh, Wendell Rodericks will be tracing Goan history uh, in a show called 10 Histories Goan Costume. So yeah, even fashion is a part of this, which is kind of interesting. So if uh, people want to know more about the website and see the complete schedule, they should go to serendipityartsfestival.com. So that's it for the scene and mm. we'll be back with Metro Station. Are you confused about your future education options? Not sure about whether you should be doing an MBA? Or if design school is the right fit for you? Are you worried about how you would finance your education? Find answers to this and a lot more education-related topics on this podcast. Hi, my name is Akhil Daswani. I'm the CEO and co-founder of OnCourse. Hi, my name is Alisha Mashruwala. I'm the CEO and co-founder of OnCourse. And we both are your co-hosts for the OnCourse podcast. Tune in every Monday on the IVM podcast app or any other podcast app you may like. Metro Station. Now in Metro Station, we're going to do something a little unorthodox. Unorthodox for us at any rate. Uh, we're going to read a bunch of poems. Now in the scene, we talked about the Poets Translating Poets Festival. And um, we got a bunch of poets who are participating in this festival to tell us what their favorite Bombay poems are. And a bunch of them um, sent us their sent us their favorite Bombay poems. Now we're going to read these poems out. Uh, unfortunately, none of us are performers. Uh, we don't have any theater experience, uh, so we might. We're ever gonna get and I think the last time I wrote, read a poem out was in class eight or something. Yeah, like so that. we might just do just a, many, many, many a really, years really ago. terrible job of reading out these poems. But uh, for whatever it's worth. Uh, here's a bunch of Bombay poems. Amit, why don't you start? So, yeah, let's start from the worst. <laughs> so we have uh, the worst the rendition, worst re- rendition not the, the worst best poem. poem. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this, this is five forty six Santhiri local by Arundhati Subramaniam, which I've actually read before, and it's theatre actor. Theatre actor Danish Hussain. It's his uh, poem. favorite poem. And Danish Hussain, he's a poet, and uh, more famously, he's a dastangoi. So he does these dastangoi performances, and dastangoi is a sort of Urdu storytelling performance mm-hmm. form. Cool. Okay, but due apologies to Arundhati Sarumbramaniam. Here goes. <laughs> In the women's compartment of a Bombay local, we search for no personal epiphanies, like metal licked by relentless acetylene. We are welded. Dreams, disasters, germs, destinies, flesh and organza, odors and ovaries, a thousand limbed, million tongued, multi spouse, Kali on wheels. When I descend, I could choose to dice carrots or dice a lover. I postpone the latter. Bravo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yes, yeah, sorry a, again. It's quite Arundhati. an intense poem, that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it has the words odors and ovaries. So, here you go. So, the next poem is Sukumara Narayanan's favorite Bombay poem. And Purva is going to read it out. Yeah, it's uh, Arun Kolatkar's Temperature Normal Pulse Respiration Satisfactory. I lean back in the armchair and Bombay sinks. The level of the balcony parapet rises and the city is submerged. The terraces, the chimneys, the water tanks, the antennas, everything. The whole city gone under. I look at what remains. My eyes take up the slack of the twilight sky. I count a crow and three sparrows, each flying according to its light. I stretch my legs, I put up my feet on the parapet, I hear a cheeping sound, I see a sparrow. Is there a connection? I'm afraid I do not know. 
This cross I make of my own two feet floats on the fast horizon. Okay, that wasn't so bad. So I'm going to read out uh, Ranjit Hoskote's favorite Bombay poem. And it's The View from Chinch Pokli. This is the third mention of Ranjit Hoskote on the show. So The View from Chinch Pokli by Dilip Chitre. It's, sl- it's slightly long. A foul sun rises from behind the textile mills as I crawl out of my nightmares and hobble to the sink. Then I luxuriate in the toilet while my unprivileged compatriots of Parel Road Cross Lane defecate along the stone wall of Baikala Goods Depot. I shudder at the thought of going out of this lane towards the main road. Hundreds of workers are already returning from the night shift, crossing the railway lines. The bus stop is already crowded. I begin to read the morning's papers and cover my naked mind with global events. The ceiling fan whirs, but I sweat. I breathe in the sulfur dioxide emitted by the Bombay Gas Company, blended with specks of cotton and carbon particles discharged by the mills that clothe millions of loins. Then I shave and shower, dismissing all untouchables from my mind, fearing more palpable pollution. On my way out, I shall throw a used condom and a crumpled pack of cigarettes into the garbage, and like a Glorious Hindu hero, reluctantly riding his chariot to the center of the battlefield, I will take a cab to the Manhattan-like unreality of Nariman Point. There I will shape India's destiny using my immaculate gift. I will ride in a taxi. I will pass the Victoria Garden Zoo without blinking. Baikala Bridge will give me the first line of a poem. And the Christians, Jews and Muslims on my way will inspire a brilliant critique of contemporary Indian culture. Of course, I will ignore the junk shops, the tea houses, the restaurants, the markets. I zigzag through. I shall smoothly go past the Institute of Art, anjuman islam the Times of India, the Bombay Municipal Corporation and Victoria Terminus. If I glance at Flora Fountain or the Bombay High Court, it will be an absent-minded observation. And if I seem to look at the University of Bombay's clock tower and buildings, it will only be the sulking stare of a dirty-minded alma mater fucker at the old hag herself. All beyond all lies my daily sigh of relief because the gross millions are temporarily out of sight. Some culture is possible in that half a square mile where the wall of India cracks open and the sea is visible. I change pokely. Once I return in the evening, I plot seductions and rapes, plan masterpieces of evasion. The loudspeakers blare at me, bedbugs bite me, cockroaches hover about my soul. Mice scurry around my metaphysics, mosquitoes sing among my lyrics, lizards crawl over my religion, spiders infest my politics. I itch, I become horny, I booze, I want to get smashed. And I do. It comes easy at Chinchpokli, where a minor Hindu god, I am stoned by the misery of my worshippers and by my own triumphant impotence. Well done. Stinging <laughs> critique of Bombay. That is... Intense. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to recover from that one. And I didn't even read it. <laughs> so, yeah. So that was it for Metro Station and um, you know we'll be back next week with Power Bites. In the meantime, you can remember to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook with the Daily Power and you can, you can also sign up to our newsletter on the website and get our recommendations of things to do on the weekend and also remember to sign up for notifications on Sava. See you next time. If you like listening to the podcast, you can also check out Cyrus Says, hosted by The Cyrus Brocha. It's an irreverent podcast on current events, urban India, politics, sports, civic sense, traffic, kids, food, and everything that matters, well, mostly. Excuse me, bhaiya. Excuse me. Bole, madam. Menu mein kya hai? Menu mein seen and seen hai, podcast hai, on course hai, Cyrus says hai, Made in India, Rediscovery Project, Empowering Series, Sex Wax hai, IVM Likes hai, Simplified hai, Keeping It Queer hai, Things and Destinations hai, My Neighbor Zuckerberg hai, or The Fan Garage hai. Aapko kya chahiye hai? Uh, ek baar repeat kar denge kya? Repeat, repeat nahi karta hum. Aap jao, IVMpodcast.com pe aur suno ye sab. Ya fit download karo unka app. Sab aapke unglio pe.